<laughs> Hi, it's me. It's Jessica. Welcome to another one of my videos. It's crazy. My gosh, I'm dressed up warm. It's cold. I'm at work, so believe it or not, I can sort of, you know, I can toot people's horn. Today is February 8th, 2014. <laughs> It's amazing. I'm almost, I'm almost ready to cry. This is my last day of work. Work. <laughs> I am. I'm almost ready to cry. It's crazy. I got a job when I come back. I've been blessed with this job. Obviously, the oil field has been treating me very damn, dang good. Damn good. Hell, damn ain't a bad word. Beavers do that. I was going to do this video later today because I kind of don't know what I'm going to say, but I just wanted to do this location here. I mean, I've been working in the oil field since 2008. I've only transitioned, what, for the last couple of years, two and a half years. Um, then I made the commitment and went on hormones and, 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 and built a plan, and it's... It's kind of scary. It's not ladylike to work out here. Um, this is actually a man's world. There are women out here. Um, we do try to, you know, show the guys what to do. <laughs> it's, you know, it's 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 amazing what my life has done to bring me to this point. I owe a lot. I mean, heck, I was living with my parents. I was drinking. I just didn't care. Looking for a job was nothing. I mean, I'd work spot jobs here and there, work under the table. You know, I was living in California. The economy is not the best in California. And it's like, and my parents packed up and moved to Texas. And I was like, I didn't have no job, no nothing, so I kind of, you know, Mike, go move. I mean, because it was Mike then. I wasn't even trying. I was going back and forth. I still had my clothes. I was still, you know, frustrated with my, I was drinking. That's when I had my two DWIs. And coming to Texas was the best thing. I didn't know it then. I know it now, even though my parents have, you know, both passed on. Coming to Texas, this is what, this is what making me happy today. Of course, I'm in New Mexico, but I'm right at the Texas border. I might as well say I'm in Texas, okay? It all started moving to Texas, and there's an oil field in Texas. When I first started transitioning, I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna practice my voice, which obviously I'm not doing the best of. I don't sweat the small stuff. People see me in person, it's not a problem. It's still sort over the phone, it still frustrates me, but you know, I. it is what it is. It is. I'm happy. I'm also a big girl, what the hell? I'm still happy. I don't have to be a thin, skinny, you know, supermodel to be happy. And I'm, I'm actually glad I'm not because I don't want a bunch of tranny chasers. <laughs> Plus, I like my meat and potatoes. What can I say? I even like a bag of Fritos every now and then. So, I was thinking I'd just start the oil field... You know, just finish up. Get a secretary job because that's what transgender people do. Do data entry. Do something. Oil field, I just ain't going to, I ain't going to survive in the oil field. I ain't. Not transitioning. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and you know what? I don't know. The people out here, I don't know if they're trans, you know, 
I'm stealth. I'm like, what the hell? It's not their business. If a foreman comes up here, it's not, hey, you know, before I haul your oil, I, you know, before I drive your truck, uh, before I toot your horn, I'm transgendered. Hey, no, they don't need to, damn no. <laughs> so I guess it's stealth. You know what? I don't go to Walmart. I don't get on the PA. I don't make a fuss out of it. I just blend right in and... <sighs> yes, ma'am. Not a problem, ma'am. So I move out of here blind there. I get kicked out of my place in Texas. This is fast forwarding a lot of different years. This is after my parents died and I moved out on my own. And it's like... I gotta do something. I need money. The only thing I know how to do though is drive truck and do oil field. I'm transitioning though. Hell, my name's Jessica now. I just can't do that. So I move out to a different state altogether, blindly, don't even know the area, never. Took over two months to finding a job. A lot of background checks. A lot of back. It ain't easy. And I'm sure a couple of them did a background check. Found out I was transgendered and said, you know what? Too much risk. The job I got now, I don't know if they found out or not. I mean, obviously they know now. But only two people in the human resources department. They're the only two that know. They're the only two that need to know. And I got to contact them, you know, once a month for the next, you know. I got to call them once in Thailand and then once when I get back. And hopefully after two months, I can get. But I'm almost taking three months of work off. And I owe it to the oil field. I know the sun's starting to come up now. <laughs> I kind of parked in a good spot. So anyway, it's like, no. Never going to be able to afford surgery. Never going to be able to get it downhill. I might well just drink myself to death. Not even going to bother with hormones. Not going to do any of this stuff. Hell, I can't be a supermodel. I'm not going to be Miss America anyway. Why even bother? <laughs> you see this? It's a smile. It is a smile. And that's what it's all about. It's all about the smile. When there's a, if there's a will, there's a way. And you know what? I always, I believe in reincarnation, sort of, kind of, you know, hey, if I had a past life, you know what? I was probably some Southern belle or something. I, the Victorian dresses always get me, so it had to be something in the, that era that I lived in before. And I don't know if that's the case or not. But you gotta sit here and ask yourself, well, hell, what did the trans trans people do back then? In the 1800s, in the 1700s? They didn't have hormones. They didn't have the blue pill. I'm going crazy. I haven't had a blue pill in a couple of days. <laughs> but what do they do? Obviously, the economy was different back then. But they didn't have surgery, so to speak. They didn't have none of this stuff. So, what did they do? <laughs> what would you have done if you were born back in that time and, and didn't have no options? Couldn't get no surgery. Couldn't get on hormones. You were just stuck. You gotta ask yourself this sometimes. You really do. It's amazing. And I don't know what I would have done. I would have soldiered on. I wouldn't have given up on life. Obviously in this day and age, there's I have more options. But still you look back and it's like, oh my gosh. You know, the people back in the early days, at least they were able to come to California. They were they had that gold rush going on. It was easy to make money. Do you see that behind me? This is why I parked right here. 
If there's a will, there is a way. This is not gold. It ain't. But some people do call it black gold. It's amazing, too. It really is. I can roll down this dirty old window. Kind of show you what's going on here. Because it is amazing. I mean, you got your pump jack. You got your oil. Look at that. Way over there. Can you see that? Uh, maybe I need to zoom in a little bit more. Two right there. Two different ones. Right close to each other. They're drilling. Those over there, those tanks, they just did those last month. You can barely see on the top of the hill there. Where is it at? There it is. You can barely see another one of those towers sticking way up over there. This area... This area is not getting smaller, okay? The oil field is not going to die. Let me get back out. This ain't gold brush. You don't got to go on a stream and start fishing or working. They're handing you the money. North Dakota, Texas, Odessa, Midland, Texas. That whole area is just like this. Are they transgendered friendly? No. They are roughnecks out here. <laughs> but I don't go parading around bars. I don't go flashing around. Hey, I'm transgendered. Hey. And even if some of them know and some of them guess, or <laughs> that lady looks like a damn dude. Or whatever. They keep it to themselves. I'm not worried about it. My family was really, really worried about my safety when I came out here. It's like, it ain't nothing but a thing. You got to make this happen. The smile's got to happen. <laughs> this smile ain't going away. <laughs> you believe it? Next week, I'm going to be in Thailand. I'm going to have, I'm going to be three days in Thailand next week. Hell, today's the 8th. <laughs> I don't have insurance. I turned it down because I wanted to save money and I don't trust the... I just don't like the American technique. It's two-stage. You know, you don't need to get the, the lobby of plasti if you don't want it, but it's basically a two-stage. You got to go back. I just, I want it all done at once. And I, me, myself, I researched it. I like, excuse me, I like the, the technique they have in Thailand. A lot of different doctors over there share the same technique. Why they don't do the technique over here in the United States, I don't know. Every doctor's different, but my time is coming. And I owe it to this oil film. And I drive truck. You don't got to drive truck. Hell, do you want to... Can you pay for surgery by working at McDonald's or working at Walmart? Can, can you pay for... Probably not. But... You go to your Walmart right now. I bet you they're hiring at minimum wage. Maybe 50 cents more than minimum wage. Maybe 8 bucks an hour they'll start. The Walmart down here starts at $13.75. And then if you work at night, I think you get an extra 50 cents or an extra dollar. Hell, McDonald's down over here. They hire, they're still hiring at $12, $12.50 an hour. Flipping burgers. It's in the oil field. The economy's so dang good and they're drilling. They're bringing in people. What they need, they need people that can pass drug tests. You know, can you stay sober for a while? Are you willing to make a paycheck? There's Texas. There is North Dakota. North Dakota's even more booming than this. And people in North Dakota make a lot more than what I'm making. I'm making 24 bucks an hour. I'm putting in like 60 hour work weeks so you can imagine there's 20 hours right there of overtime my checks are pretty dang good <laughs> and there's no bragging there is no bragging I'm not going to do this the rest of my life I'm going to come back 
I'm, you know, thankful for my job, my company. They're going to keep me. They're going to say, you know what? Once the doctor gets, signs you up, you can come back to work. We don't have to train somebody else. <laughs> whether or not, and it's two people, you know, whether or not they support my decision, agree with my decision, or whatever, I, you know, because I'm just packing up and leaving. I, hey, work, I'm going to have surgery whether you allow me to or not. Oh, we'll, we'll allow you to have the medical leave act now. <laughs> You're not going to get paid, but you'll have your job. And see, that saves them from having to train somebody else, from having to trust somebody else. I mean, obviously, they trust me. You know, it is what it is. It's a gamble to come out and just move, just to pack up and move. But it, you know what? If the economy is doing this good here and in North Dakota and in other places, I think Oklahoma, parts of Oklahoma, any oil boom in town. I think if you want to do data entry or work on computers, I think you still pretty much stuck to like Dallas or Houston. Obviously... All this stuff is hooked up to satellites, and all of it gets shuttled. All the information usually gets shuttled to bigger cities, probably Midland, Odessa. Uh, gets shuttled over to Dallas, gets shuttled over to Houston. Those are the big hubs, you know, where all the electrical and data entry and stuff like that goes. You know, those are different economies. Uh, Walmarts in Dallas and Houston don't usually pay. Like this one here is 13 bucks an hour. I think when I quit Walmart in Corsicana... I was at 11 bucks an hour, and I was fighting to get that. <laughs> that was four, after four years. So, I think it's just in the town, the oil towns itself, that the Walmarts and stuff. But for data entry, stuff like that, there's jobs. There's economies out here. Unemployment's like ridiculously low. <laughs> but I'm going to come back. I'm taking three months off, practically. I'm not going to go back to work until at least April 27th. So it's two months, but I'm taking two weeks of vacation. It's like two and a half months. Boom, gone. No paycheck, no nothing. I'm fine. I'm good. Financially, I am set. Thanks to that thing behind me. I'm not set for life. I didn't win the lottery. I still got to go to work. <laughs> But when I get back, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be cutting it close. And I'll be good. So, there goes somebody driving down there. Safety people, they drive around in pickups. That's all they do. That's their job. They don't even get dirty like me. They just drive around. They're just safety. They're probably making 18, 20 bucks an hour just driving around. Other people, they'll sit there and gauge. I mean, there's so many different jobs out here in the oil field. Truck driving is not your only option. I'll probably be pushing 70000 this year. I probably will. Of course, the IRS takes a bunch of crap out. Next year, with all the months often I'm, ta I'm taking through, I'll probably make forty or fifty, probably. Somewhere in there. And then I'll probably work one more year in the oil field. I'm out. I'm going to buy me a piece of property somewhere, and then I'll retire at Walmart. I'll work part-time. I'll be cool. I'll get my Obamacare. <laughs> I'll work those less hours. But for the surgery aspect, that's what I was talking about. The gold rush. This is it. I came here a little over a year ago. It took me a few months to find a job. I was almost ready to give up. I was... It took me over two months. I think it was almost three months, but it took me over two. It was like two and a half months. It took me to get a job, and I had experience. But I think it had to do with the paperwork, the Social Security numbers. you got to get all your paperwork matched up. And what a lot of people say is, you know, what I should have done, I should have worked in the oil field and saved up my money first. Grew my beard out. You know, it's Mike back then. Hell, Mike can have a beard. Get your electrolysis done. Save up. Boom. Your insurance ain't going to cover your electrolysis anyway. No. You got to get to work. <laughs> Either that or shave the rest of your life. And that sucks. So. I owe it all to that thing right there. <laughs> and it's. This is the result right here. This smile. 
And this smile right here. You know the staples? I, I forgot to bring it, but they have that little button and you press it and it goes, that was easy. You know, staples. They're office supply store. Press it, that was easy. Back in the old days, I, I mentioned this before in my old videos, you know, there wasn't really a minimum wage. There wasn't nothing. They could just walk up to a farmer, you know, you be on horse. You know what I'm talking about? The old western days. Hell. They just work on a farm just for a little roof on their head and be secured for a while. You know? Maybe a little allowance. Go into town, get a hooker or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what I was in my past life because I sure ain't now. <laughs> Those Victorian dresses, there's something, I don't know, a year, a little over a year, well, committed. I mean, I've worked in the oil field for five years. I wasn't committed. I was drinking it. I was partying. I was, I wasn't committed. I took a year and a half committed and boom, save up enough money. <laughs> now I got the smile. My last day of work. I'm looking at my calendar, my truck. Today's the 8th, and it's like, you know what? I'm, I've been cleaning my truck, but it's still a mouse. But look at that. All that yellow. All that yellow. And then I flip this over. I got paper clips on it. But I flip it over. Look at that. March. All the March is off. I'm gone. April. I might be back on the 27th. I mean, I'll be back in the United States, but being back to work, I might be back in the work on the 27th. And then, of course, May is my weekends. If I come back, it'll be light duty. And there's my birthday, the 25th. I got it off. Ha <laughs> ha. So, oops. <laughs> They're growing out here. You're not taking my job. If you come out here, you do what you can. Do what you need to do. They are building oil field everywhere. As long as, as long as, I know you didn't want a no shot, did you? And as long as they're building, uh, doing pavement on the ground, electric cars, even if we went electric, it still need pavement. Plastic bags, go to Walmart, double plastic bag your stuff next time. Hell, what do you think plastic's made out of? Or derived a lot from oil. Hello. Yeah, think of that next time you brush your teeth and with those plastic bristle toothbrush. <laughs> it is what it is. The oil field ain't going nowhere. The oil's coming out. Whether they truck it out with the big old <laughs> or if they train it out, I don't, you know, it's coming out of the ground. Until we actually stop using it, which we're not going to do. Take advantage of it. I'm thankful for the oil field. The oil field is what made this happen for me. Other people have done it other different ways. You just got to draw out a plan and stick to it. You know? If your parents are rich, use their money. Stick to a plan. Do what makes you happy. I'm just going to stay here, do what I need to do, come back, make some more money, save up for property, and then once I get property, I can boom. But I need to get back to work. It's been 25 minutes already? Wow. Yeah, I better hurry up and get back to work. <laughs> it's all good. It is all good. You've got to be true. You've got to be yourself. And until next time. <laughs>